good to see you. It's good to have all of you here. You know, it's you know when th th this time of year where a lot of people have gone on vacation, and Sam and Mary went down uh, to Fort Worth area to their granddaughter's graduation. And yesterday we got a. I heard in the news yesterday morning that <coughs> where my son goes to church was flooded. Mm. And uh, and so I quickly called Mary and told her, you better be careful because Granberry's flooded. So I texted my son later that day, late afternoon. I said, is the water receded enough for you guys to go to church at Granberry? He said, I'll get back with you on that. And so he gets back to, with me later and he says, yep, yeah, the pastor says the coast is clear, we can go to church. Amen. And so we do not know what flooding is around here. We've never experienced that. When we do have heavy rains, we're such a location where the rain, the water recedes rather quickly. I don't know about Lubbock. I don't know if Lubbock is slow or what. It's been one minute longer yet. There you go. There you go. So we are fortunate in a way that we don't live next to any rivers or anything. And they said this is the worst they've had in years. I know Houston is having it hard. And the TV is not on. It is blinking. Okay. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. I always enjoy um, Robert and his wife Leah, and of course Elizabeth tags along, and she's such a joy. I love giving her a hard time. In fact, I like to give Leah a hard time. In fact, I like to give everybody a hard time. <laughs> I, I, I love the way I hug the boys, Isaac and Joseph. They can't stand it, but I enjoy it. Anyway, uh, it's nice to have Mark with us handling the, the, the computer. And Takinka is here as a guest, and we appreciate him being here. And Albert Ellis made the church. And Leela, uh, and Leela and, and Troy are here. Thank you for being here, all of you. And of course, at the last moment I chose Nassar to do scripture, I was thinking of Mary being here, and I forgot that she was not going to be here, so at the last moment, I, um, last night I said, Nassar, you're it. And he said, okay. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not uh, that I do this intentionally, it, it isn't, believe me. It just, it's just me. And I, I thank Randy for being here, and I know Randy's enjoying his new granddaughter, his Amen. first grandchild in the family, and I know he's going to be a doting grandfather. And now, as you know, after fellowship di after fe after service, we have fellowship dinner every Sabbath. We have fellowship dinner, not because we like to eat, because like like my husband says, it's a ministry. Because if people come to church, sometimes they'd say, you know, what are we going to do for food? We like for people to stay, eat, and visit. I enjoy it the best after cleaning is done. There's a few of us like that stay and we visit. And I love those talks more than anything. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, we have on Wednesday night, David, on May 25th, started this new series called Heroes of Faith. It's fantastic. It's been done by Doug Batchelor. And it is very informative. There's 10 um, series, I guess you want to call it, programs, whatever you want to call it. There are 10 different individuals that he speaks on. And he gives you an in depth uh, story about each individual, about their life, their situation. And at the end of that program, what we do is we visit and talk. Like, what did you get out of this? Did something that was heard hit you on the head? Is there something you did not know about this individual? And people come up with all sorts of, of thoughts and ideas, and I find that most informative. So we're gonna have that. We didn't have it this past Wednesday because of the rain. There was a, a little flooding issues between Dimmit and, and Hart, and so we decided, well, we're gonna stay home. And Plainview had it bad too, so we, it was wise for us to stay. So this Wednesday at 655, we will have it. And now for our offering, our budget each month is $1,505, and of course this is the first Sabbath of the new month, so we don't have anything yet. And uh, last Sabbath, 27, we're $32 short from reaching our budget, but that's okay. 
because the month before we went over, Amen. very much over. So that would take care of our deficit. And with that preaching schedule, today is, I know it doesn't show this, but today is Robert Plant, and uh, he's going to bring us a sermon entitled, His Way is the Highway. Amen. And then next Sabbath is Mario Moronis. Mario lives, is this, David, is this San Antonio? No. He's El Paso. El Paso. I was close. Yeah, all right. That's <laughs> 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 close. <laughs> Anyway, he says he loves coming here. Mm -hmm. He enjoys the fellowship. He enjoys the food. And we know he enjoys the food because he goes for two or three helpings. So we know he's enjoying the food. But he also has a good presentation. He mixes his life with Bible truths. And he talks about his life before Christ and after Christ. And how some of the stories in the Bible kind of reflect his own life. And so I don't know what he's going to speak on, but I'm looking forward to it. And then the 18th of June is Dustin Galloway out of, out of he lives in Anton, uh, just a city outside of Lubbock, mm -hmm. and we always enjoy him. And the last step of the month is Pastor Green. Now, we know Pastor Green's uh, situation and his health, so we're not gonna, you know, hold our breath on him of being here, but if he cannot make it, he will let us know in advance. And that has happened a time or two. Also, he has two other churches that he has to, he, he pastors over. And so we pray that he, because of his health and because of his other responsibilities, we pray that he will be able to make it here. Right. We always enjoy him, and we always enjoy his wife and his mother-in-law when she comes. And, and with that, I believe that is all the announcements there is to be made. And for that, we will stand and, and sing our call to worship, which is entitled, I Need Thee Every Hour. Please be seated. And now, Yolanda will present our children's story. And yes, we do have some children, ranging from 10 to 100. <laughs>
you're a modern day Gideon. That's a good idea. So finally they realized that they had everything set up and they looked at it for a little while and decided to go to bed. Well, they were able to sleep. But just a few hours before daybreak, he woke up and he talked and he turned and he was so anxious to find out the truth. He didn't know whether he actually wanted Sunday to finally be proven that it was right or to dispel it and find out that the Sabbath was the actual day. Which one did he want? He was so confused, he didn't even know. He lay there and he tossed and turned. Right at daybreak, he gets up and he runs to the kitchen and his wife runs right after him. And they slow down as they get near the table where the two bowls are at. And he looks at the bowl that says Sunday and there's nothing in there but water. Then he looks at the bowl that says seven. And there's two dead cockroaches mm. floating on top of the wall. Mm. And he jumped up with joy. He said, finally, finally, I know the truth. The Sabbath is on the seventh day. And he was so upset. He went and told all his friends about the dream, about how everything had happened, about the cockroaches. And on that very day, he chose to worship on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. He no longer is a Lutheran minister. He is now a pastor at a Seventh-day Adventist church in mm -hmm. Africa. And to this day, he gladly tells anyone willing to listen the story of those two cockroaches. Mm -hmm. Please always remember that if you ask for guidance to the truth, God is always willing to give you the answer. Mm -hmm. We just have to be willing to hear. Let's come forward and we'll have a word of prayer. Power heads, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us your truth, Father, and for clearing the truth for the lies and the deceit that this world creates, Father. We know that in you is only truth, Father, and if you want to know truth, Help us to always seek you and your truth and not be swayed away from the lies that this world creates. This lies that are coming from Satan to deceive us that we may not be saved. Help us always to seek you first. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Showers of 
the scripture reading today is from John 14, verse 6. And it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to start the intercessory prayer a little bit different. Okay? I'm, okay? I'm going to ask you guys what God has done through the week, something good in your life, so we can praise Him. I'll, I will start. My son, who is in the army, got his fifth son, or fifth child, I should say. On June the 2nd, a healthy boy has yes. six pounds, five ounces, 19.25 inches long. <laughs> Born at 8.07 a.m. And the baby's name is Ira Alistair. And they told me that it was a biblical name, but um, I, I have not been able to find it. Any brother Robert can help with after after church. So that is a praise item from God for me. How about you guys? I guess I'm next right behind him. I was uh, this was last last Wednesday. It was uh, 9:05. Well, this was my first granddaughter, from my only girl. So it was. Uh, I guess I got him beat. This was seven pounds six ounces, 20, 20 and a half inches long. And uh, right now she's home. She's doing great. And uh, her name's uh, Lakin Hensley Rubio. So. Something bad's about to happen. We know that the world is anti, like there's a big 
more wars, more, tri more trials, more, more strife, and yet we can be at peace because we know these things will happen. Mm -hmm. And we know, like Christ says, when you see these things happen, you know that my coming is near. Amen. And we know when he comes is to get the righteous home, mm -hmm. the righteous living and the righteous dead. Many people believe when Christ comes, he'll set the earth like the Garden of Eden, and he'll go down to Jerusalem and enter the temple. That's not so. Mm -hmm. We know the truth, and we know it's going to happen. And I thank the Lord for that. And I thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, talks to us, and reasons with us. And he keeps us on that path that leads to heaven. Amen. Anyone else? And while you're thinking, I uh, would like to welcome the people that just came in. Happy Sabbath. I will say that yesterday was my mom's older sister's birthday. She was 70 years of age. So that's a blessing in and of itself. Amen. And, and she's a mom? She's my, my mom's older sister's mom. Oh, okay. Okay. And? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. How about some healing requests? Mm -hmm. Physical healing, spiritual healing, anybody? All the above. Spiritual, yes, all the above. All the above, yeah. okay. Yes. I guess my, I guess this is uh, Randy's family. I got a lot of kids folks with cancer and everything else. This is all popping up. And so just for physical healing and, and, and spiritual healing, there's all the church of hearts knowing that. First, that spiritual healing got to come. Amen. Yeah. And you body. I can go with my pain and suffer with my pain because I know the Lord has a new body for me. <coughs> that don't matter to me. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I, I can hear no, it. I have several unspoken. Un unspoken. Okay. okay.
morning, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Our offer will be going to local church budget. But how can someone be rich toward God? Luke 12, 13 and 22 describes a man who wanted Jesus to convince his brothers to divide their family inheritance with him. Jesus, however, followed the inquiry with a series of teachings that are still relevant to Christians living today. Jesus warned against greed. One's life should not consist of guaranteed possessions. Next, he urged visitors to seek the kingdom of God, centering their lives on God's eternal kingdom. The promise is that God will provide for the physical needs of those who give priority to God's kingdom. The third piece of advice is one response. The disciples who trust God will be a good, faithful, a good, watchful steward. In fact, the owner might come at any time and will hold the steward accountable. For everyone to whom much is given, much will be required. In the 48. But what about ordinary people like you and me? What has God given you? Has God given you property, speech, strength, or influence? According to the talents to be stored will be the, re the returns called for. Being rich toward God is about where, where your treasure is. Your heart follows your treasure. Where is your heart today? May the Lord help you and me to be rich toward God as you support the local ministry with your offerings to me. May the deacons come forward. Let's bow our ears in prayer. And Father, we thank you. Thank you for your beautiful Sabbath. And Lord, we thank you that we can come to you now, return these tithes and offerings to you, because you are, are, our everything, our job, our support, and everything that we desire we should always be looking towards you. So we give you these offerings, these tithes back to you because they are yours. And we thank you for your protection, for your guidance, and we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ our Lord. Because in, in one gift you gave up heaven. So what are these tithes and offerings we give back? That can never, that can never amount to what you gave for us. So in Jesus' name we say thank you, Lord. Thank you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
There we go. Thank you. 
Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, declares that we are to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Yes. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And if thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy men servant, nor thy maid, maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger who is within thine days, for in six days the Lord made the heaven, mm -hmm. the earth, the sea, and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Again, this is the day yes. which the Lord has made. Yes. We will rejoice. Amen. Amen. The title of the sermon, His Way is the Highway. Amen. John 14, 6, King James Version declares, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Now the moment of it. There is a phrase that is all too often heard in this society. It's a phrase that has been uttered by countless individuals who have run the rat race that we call life. This phrase is intended by those who utter it to let others know what the real deal is. Many people of this world of the false belief that if everyone just realized its essence, the world in which we live would be a better place. The phrase is the anthem of oh so many folks in the world today, and sadly so. But the origin of this phrase is literally out of this world. The universe has had the misfortune of bearing witness to the fruits of these words for over 6,000 years, as the one who uttered this equivalent has sought to provide a counter example to the standards set well before even his creation. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. This is a familiar passage. We find out who said and what said. You found the say amen? All right. Starting at verse 12. And it reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most. Mercy. Such fruits have only desecrated the image that was intended for us and include disobedience, murder, adultery, robbery, lying, and envy. The result of this phrase has led to thousands upon thousands of religions and millions upon millions of ideas of what is the realization of truth. What is this phrase that I speak of and have been guilty of so many times in my life? It's my way or the highway. Mercy. Thanks be to God for an answer to our great confusion. There is one whose way has poured ceaselessly through the ages of our time-bound sojourn on this sun-stained earth. From the fall of mankind, even unto the end, this way 
has not been detached from the world, but has gone in the midst of it as the Amen, the faithful and true witness, and the beginning of the creation of God. This way came down from heaven over 2,000 years ago, literally walked among us for over 30 and 3 years, came to a cross road, and has continued onward and upward ever since. Though relatively few in number, many have been or will be led by the way unto life eternal, for it leads to the Father of all and will reach its final destination in the earth made new. It is not my way or the highway, but his way is the highway. That was the appetizer, here's the entree. The Apostle Paul spoke eloquently of the way in his first epistle to the Corinthians, as has been recorded in the 13th chapter from verse 4 to the beginning of verse 8. Let us turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Starting at verse 4, ending with the beginning of verse 8. Time to say amen. amen. When you see the word charity, you can substitute selfless love. And you can also substitute Jesus. But I read it as it's stated in the King James. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Put it in my scripture, it doesn't pop its collar does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, charity never faileth. Love never fails. This way made himself known to his disciples as it is recorded in our theme scripture, John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So everyone can pick their own way and find themselves at the Father. Is that what it says? It says, how many? None, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. This way is Jesus. The anointed Savior of the world has been, is, and will always be yes. the way set before us. Yeah. He was typified in the old covenant embodied in the new covenant and calls for all who profess to believe upon him to likewise become an embodiment. Now, he was typified in the old covenant. Let's look at Psalm 77, verse 13. Who knows what that says? Got one hand. Psalm 77. 7, verse 13. If you found this, amen. amen. Thy way, O God, is in Rome. All right. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God 
That's all. God. He was embodied in the new covenant. Turn to John. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14. John 1 is a beautiful chapter. John 1, 14. It says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He was typified in the Old Covenant, embodied in the New Covenant, and calls for all who profess to believe upon Him to likewise become an embodiment. Let's look at John chapter 6, verse 51. And then we'll look at Romans 6, 23, and Revelation 3, 20. It's all tied to how we are called to become that embodiment. John 6, 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live how long? Forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. Romans 6, 23. Amen. Amen. Yes. Who knows this from my heart? It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through who? Jesus Christ, our Lord. Wasn't this mentioned in Sabbath school? And let's finally look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. I'll give you a hand. And it reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and open up the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Amen. So Jesus is seeking to enter into our lives so that our lives will eventually become whose? His. Amen. Now, let's take a few moments and connect the type of the Old Testament sanctuary to its anti-typical fulfillment in the life of Christ as well as how we who profess to love him are called to fulfill the type through him. When you enter into the Old Testament sanctuary, the first thing you saw was what? I'll give you a hint. It had fire. The altar of sacrifice or the altar of burnt offering, which represents the sacrifice of Christ. Now, how did Christ fulfill it? He humbled himself. Let's look at Philippians. Chapter 2, starting in verse 5, ending in verse 8. The Epistle of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, 
verse 5 to 8. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in who? Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of how much reputation? No reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, Amen. and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Amen. He humbled himself, and he caused us to do the same. Yes. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Amen. This was a favorite passage of mine growing up. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do everything the world does. Mm -hmm. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's how we are called to typify the altar of burnt offering. We don't burn up lambs, goats, and bulls in the mall. Amen. Jesus paid how much? And how much do we owe? All to him. After the altar of burnt offering, you have the bronze laver. What does that represent? Baptism. Baptism. The sinless one. And it is recorded that Jesus said how much? None. He entered into the water. Let's look at Matthew, thir Matthew 3, verses 13. To 17. The Gospel of Matthew. I apologize for all the pages turning. That's just. You okay, yeah. boy? Amen. Third chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. And this is the record. Then coming Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him. Say, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answered, answering, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And he suffered it. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. The sinless one entered into the water, as we who are sinners are called to enter therein. Romans 6. Just left the Romans 6, verses 3 and 4. Amen. Amen. I'm going to me. And it reads, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into who? Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, 
Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. So we've passed the altar of burnt offering. We've passed the bronze laver. We enter into the holy place. Yes. And as we look to our right, we see the table of show bread. What does that represent? I'll show you. Amen. The word of God. Jesus himself declared that he is the bread of life. John 6, verses 48 and 51. And we'll stay there for a moment. John chapter 6, verse 48, is a short verse. What did Jesus say? I am the bread, that bread of life. In 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eateth this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. He is the bread of life and calls us to partake of him. Staying in John 6, go to verse 53. Because the Jews ask that question, how can this man give us flesh to eat? His flesh to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have how much life in you? No life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Does so anybody know what he's talking about with his flesh? and his blood. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 11, 26. We have an answer. What does it say? For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup when when does this happen? At communion you do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. And then finally look at 2 Timothy verses uh, 2 verse 15 and 3 verse 16. 2 Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 15. Amen. Keep saying that. 2 verse 15. Sit down at home and watch the baby here all day long. Uh, no. It says to do what? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, same book, chapter 3, verse 16. Why should we study to show ourselves approved? Because how much scripture is given by inspiration? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. That means you have to live it. For reproof. Where you are found wrong, you have to be corrected. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. Now go ahead and read 17. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. He is that bread of life. He calls us to partake of him. 
So on the opposite side of the holy place from the table of showbread is a lot of light and that's seven branches. It's the seven branch candlestick. What does that represent? It represents our witness. Jesus in John 8, 12 called himself the, amen, he is the light of the world and he calls us to be likewise. Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16. And it says, who is the light of the world? You. This is Jesus speaking, ye are the light of the world. The city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify who? Your Father which is in heaven. We do nothing for our own glory. All for the glory of God. And before we reach the veil, there's another altar. There's more smoke than fire at this altar. It is the altar of incense and it represents prayer. How often did Jesus pray while he walked on this earth? Continually. How often is he praying now? Without ceasing. Continually. Let's look at Luke 6 verse 12. This is just an example. Let us record it. Luke 6, verse 12. It says, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued how long? All night in prayer to God. How many of us can pray all night? How many of us sleep all night? We have got to work on our prayer life because we are called to be like who? Amen. He is our example. And that's what we should attain and we should pray continually. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Short verse says what? I'll give you the first two words. You give me the third. Pray without ceasing. Amen. Now, after the altar of incense, passing the veil, of separation, we look inside and we see if we're fortunate. The Ark of the Covenant, which represents the glory of God. Jesus called his Father to glorify his name in John 12, verse 8. Gospel of John, 12th chapter, 8th verse. No, excuse me. 8th chapter, 12th verse. I need you to read. Amen. John 12, verse 28. Jesus says, Father, glorify thy name. 
Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. He glorified it the first time through who? His son. He will glorify it again through who? Through us, more importantly, through Jesus working in us. He has glorified it and will glorify it again. Revelation 14, verses 6 to 12. Don't hear it this much anymore. Don't hear it today. Revelation 14. Verses 6 to 12. What is this passage? The three angels' messages. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, the heaven, the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receiveth his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast of his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name, here is the patience of the saints. Amen. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That is what we are called to declare. God glorified his name through his son, and he will glorify it again through those who love him and keep no. his commandments. Man. That was the entree. Hmm. We're finally at dessert. This is the conclusion of the matter. Throughout the gospel record, our Savior and Redeemer declared that he could do how much except the will of his Father? Hmm. Nothing. No, she's confident. And ours, as an our father, by faith, he declared himself while he walked on this earth to be Ben Adam, the son of man, while others bore witness of his works and declared him to be Ben Elohim, the son of God. Brothers and sisters of the way, I submit to you that we should never have to declare with our lips that we are Christians, but that our lives, by way of Him working well through us, Amen. should bring others to yes. make the declaration of us. Amen? Amen? This does not, however, exempt us from the plain decla declaration of what thus said the Lord when called to do so. But you should not have to tell someone that you are a follower of the way for them to know such unless they recognize a difference in you and are ignorant. Peter, that brazen disciple of Christ, who himself became a humble apostle, declared in his first epistle letter that we are, in 2 verse 9, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us 
out of darkness into his marvelous light. In closing, let our living testimony be the embodiment of the 23rd Psalm. If you can recite it with me, do so. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Closing song is marching to Zion M422. We'll do all four verses. Let us stand.
Gracious Heavenly Father, sovereign prayer of heaven and earth, we thank you once again for allowing us to gather here in this house of worship yeah. one more time. <coughs> thank you for using me as your vessel. And I pray that as we remove from this place, but never from your presence, that you continue to lead us and guide us in your direction by the aid of your Holy Spirit of truth. Also, we ask that you bless the food that we're about to partake, bless the hands that prepared it, May nourish and sustain us, and let your will be done through us. In Jesus' name, amen.